good happy monday evening april 18 2022 i'm riley king welcome to this monday evening edition of the riley king newscast right here on the riley king network we have a lot of news to get to this monday evening so let's get started right now First step, Mother of Merrimack boy found dead in Massachusetts State Park charged with murder. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Grandfather Burley and Grandfather George. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Griffith. We are on the air right now with some breaking news for you. An indictment in the murder of Elijah Lewis. He's the five-year-old boy from Merrimack, found dead in September of 2021. The Attorney General's office has just announced that his mother, 35-year-old Danielle Delphinius, has been indicted by a Hillsborough County grand jury on the following charges. First-degree murder for purposely causing the death of Elijah Lewis. One count of second-degree murder for causing the death of Elijah Lewis with reckless and extreme indifference to the value of human life and three counts of tampering with witnesses. Now, Phineas is being held without bail right now. An arraignment on these new charges will be scheduled. Once again, an indictment in the murder of Elijah Lewis. The search for Elijah started in October of last year when the Attorney General's office said his unknown whereabouts were brought to the attention of the Division of Children, Youth, and Families. At the time, investigators said he had last been seen by other people six months earlier. After a significant search with multiple agencies from different states, officials eventually found Elijah's remains in a start park in Abington, Massachusetts in October of last year. Autopsy results were originally inconclusive, but officials said the Office of the Chief of Medical Examiner was able to determine that his death was a homicide. Officials said Elijah suffered facial and scalp injuries, acute fentanyl intoxication, malnourishment, and pressure of ulcers. Once again, the mother of Elijah Lewis has been indicted in his death. Full details of this story and much more coming your way on News 9 beginning at 5. We now return to our regular program. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at the two winners of the 126th running of Boston Marathon for the men's and women's division. Let's take a look at that right now. Breaking this noon, the first winners in the Boston Marathon have just crossed the finish line. Evans Chibet from Kenya is this year's men's winner, crossing that finish line in two hours, six minutes, and 51 seconds. For the women, the leaders are in the last mile right now and should be crossing the finish line any second now. In the wheelchair division, men's winner Daniel Romanchuk finished in one hour, 26 minutes. The women's winner is Manuela Scar with a time of 141. Longtime Boston marathoner Marcel Hug will not be crossing the finish line today. Earlier today, the Boston Athletic Association announced that the Switzerland native was withdrawing from the race. Hug was the 2021 men's wheelchair division champion and has won five times. The association did not say why he withdrew. 
More than 28,000 people are participating in this year's marathon. Organizers say more than 7,000 of them live outside of the U.S. One competitor turned 18 three days ago, while another is 83. The director of the Boston Athletic Association says it was a great team effort to organize today's race just a few months after the last marathon. It was a quick turnaround. Yes. It was six months instead of 12. Everyone rallied, mm -hmm. and uh, we came right out of uh, October with a great event and right into, you know, this, this year's race. The BAA estimates this year's runners will raise around $35 million for charities, and this year's race could bring close to $200 million in business to the greater Boston area. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. St. Gobain agrees to permanently provide drinking water to parts of five towns. About 1,000 properties will get access to clean water. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Here it has tested the toughness of every last one of us. We had retractors that... We start off here with some breaking news about an ongoing water issue in southern New Hampshire. St. Gobain has agreed to permanently provide safe drinking water for about a thousand homes across five towns. In 2016, elevated levels of PFO PFOAs were found near the St. Gobain plant in Merrimack. That prompted a wide investigation of water quality in the area and new state guidelines on that chemical. St. Gobain and the state provided interim bottled water to many people and upgraded some water lines. But for many people in these five towns, there is now an agreement to permanently provide drinking water. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Nashua Manchester School Districts look to fill hundreds of open positions. Job fair planned for Tuesday afternoon in Nashua. In order to create a world where everyone can belong, we need more empathy, more expressions of bridging in our structures, our products, our policies. That's what we're striving for. Aaron and Nashua, they're doing on-the-spot 15-minute interviews at the job fair that is set for tomorrow. That's at the high school from 3.30 until 6 o'clock, Nashua North. But they're competing with Manchester for many of the same qualified workers. Nashua School District started the academic year last fall with a 20-teacher deficit. The superintendent says they want to eliminate that deficit and are using social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, and a job fair to find qualified educators. But there are hundreds of other support positions that are open as well. The superintendent telling News 9 they need everything from paras to plumbers. Manchester has a similar situation, and they're also searching for a superintendent. I think it's, you know, a byproduct of people being reluctant to come back to work and using up some of the COVID money that's out there. Um, but I certainly think, you know, there are reasons to come back to Nashua. It's a great district. We have a lot of supports in place, from new teacher orientation to mentors. The competition for workers is stiff. Both Nashua and Manchester now offering signing bonuses for the hardest to fill positions. And in Manchester, a retention check after six months of work. Live in studio, Amy Cavino, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Florida judge overturns CDC mask mandate for planes. Let's take a listen to that video from MSNBC. A federal judge has just overturned the CDC's national mask mandate for planes and other forms of public transportation. Joining me now is NBC News Justice Correspondent Pete Williams. So Pete, um, will this, does this mean that everyone can take their mask off inside a plane or is there another step? Well, that's what the judge says. Uh, we're waiting to hear what the Centers for Disease Control, TSA, and the FAA say. Uh, I doubt that uh, planes in flight, for example, know about this or that most airlines are even quite aware of what they're supposed to do now. 
No comment yet from the Justice Department about what it will do, although I suspect that the government will seek a stay of this judge's order. So this is a federal judge in Tampa, Florida, who has ruled in a lawsuit brought by a group called the uh, Health Freedom Defense Fund and two women who said that uh, they didn't like wearing masks on a plane. One of them said that her anxiety was aggravated by having to wear a, a face mask, and the other said the mask constricted breathing and provoked or exacerbated her panic attacks. And the judge has said two things here, that the Centers for Z Disease Control did not have the authority to issue this mask under the law that set up the CDC, uh, and secondly, that the federal government failed to go through all the necessary steps in making a rule like this and seeking public comment. Now, the judge said normally speaking in a case like this, uh, she would issue a ruling in favor only of the parties to the lawsuit. In other words, that, that uh, a mask mandate would not apply only to them. But the judge, who is uh, Catherine Kimball Mazel of Tampa, said uh, that's not possible, that it would be hard to distinguish them from others. And then she says, uh, if, if she were to try to limit it, how is the ride-sharing driver, the flight attendant, or the bus driver to know that somebody was a plaintiff to this lawsuit with permission to enter mask-free? That just wouldn't work. So she has declared the mask mandate illegal. She has struck it down. Now, uh, as I say, I don't know what the government's going to do about this. I would, see, I would think they'd seek a stay of her ruling. This was the mask mandate, of course, as you mentioned, applied to airplanes, trains, buses, other kinds of mass transit. And in the case of airplanes, it's been extended several times yeah. because the government has said that it's been effective in helping to prevent the spread of COVID. But we just don't know what the federal government is going to do here. I would certainly guess they'll try to put a stop to this and get, and get a stay while this uh, is appealed. Pete, two years into the pan pandemic, though, with this mask mandate that has been in place for so long, why the lawsuit now? Why would it get overturned now? Well, the lawsuit was actually filed last year. It was mm. filed last July. So it's been going through, grinding uh, its way through the court in, the, in, in this, uh, before this judge, who, by the way, issued this uh, decision without a trial on summary judgment based only on the arguments that were made in the written briefs. So um, I think that may be another cause of concern here. This, uh, this is going to be a very controversial ruling. It's going to be a victory for people who have hated the mask mandates. But the government seems to believe that they are effective and I would think will try to stop this. Well, in the meantime, when we've talked to doctors, they have uniformly told us that one-way masking does work. So if you are on mass transit with somebody who's not wearing a mask and you feel nervous, they have said that if you are wearing a high-quality mask, like an N95 or a KN95, you're pretty protected. So that is good news. Uh, yeah, Pete and Williams. of course, yeah. The other, I was going to say one other aspect of this. I, I'm not sure what effect it will have on air travel because some passengers have felt that it's safer to travel because of the mask mandate. But as you also know, the mask mandate has been a source of incredible friction on airplanes, with fights breaking out over it. So I don't know whether the airline industry will welcome this or not. Well, they have some airlines have said they wanted this overturned. There are some flight attendants who have said they don't want to be the the monitors. The they don't want to have to police this inside of the planes because of all the friction and all the problems that it's caused. So yeah, we will see. Uh, Pete Williams, Pete, thanks very much. You bet. Okay, and that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night and goodbye, everyone.